if we had a proper constitution, we wouldn't have this problem because our resources would be protected. They'll be naturally protected because the constitution, the constitution would say our natural resources, all our resources must be protected for the people. We cannot have foreign entities coming over here and taking a profit. If there's a profit to be made and we the Jamaican people can make it because we're not stupid. Bauxite, um, it, this is not um, nuclear physics, it's not rocket science. This is something quite simple, it's not that complicated. We Jamaican people can easily run a bauxite company. But here we go again with the corruption in the government. So the three companies, one of them is Jamalco. Jamalco was recently sold for one dollar. One US dollar it was sold for. Jamaican government owns 45% of it. 55% is owned by a foreign company. Another foreign company stepped in and bought it for one dollar. Why didn't we the people pay one dollar and buy it for ourselves? That way, we wouldn't have a problem then. When we're producing the bauxite, we would sell the bauxite and we would get the money. But the way they've done it, they always want the foreign investor to take money because that is how our, our, our economy runs, that's how the country is run, by exploitation. Always the people are exploited, the resources are exploited. That was, that's an easy solution. So the, the finance minister needs to tell us why couldn't we buy and own and run Jamalco. But, as I heard Mr. Gordon say about there are um, elements within Jamaica that have investment within our mining. This is very true because the mining companies up here, but below, all the work is done by local contractors. They're the ones making money. And so when you see these trucks driving up and down, carrying the bauxite, they're owned by Jamaicans, and this is it. Who owns them? Do parliamentarians actually own any of these trucks that are transporting a bauxite? Because if they are owning, if they do own them, then it is a conflict of interest. It's 100% a conflict of interest, and they should be going to the, the Integrity Commission, and it should be documented. How, where do you get your income from? And anyhow, any of them have bauxite trucks, we know exactly why. Because Bauxite profit and the bauxite levy, they're inversely proportionate, aren't they? If the levy is nothing, the profits are up here. If the levy is high, then the profits come down. But these, these poly parliamentarians don't want us to get anything. So we have the levy, the levy at zero. So the profits are up here. So they can get a bigger chunk of that money can go to the local contractors. Now, I've sent my findings to MOCA. That's the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency for them to look into it. But of course, MOCA is a government agency and won't do anything. I've written to the public defender because she should get involved. She is paid by the, by the people, can't even be bothered to answer an email. I've rang, I've spoken to people there. They're not getting back to me. I've contacted um, NEPA, nothing from them. I've even contacted our private in, um, um, entities, the um, National Integrity Action and um, Trevor, Professor Trevor Munro. No interest. I've not heard nothing from him. Um, the Jamaica Environmental Trust, who always talk about the environment and the impacts of mining, but they will not talk about the bauxite levy, which is very strange. The bauxite levy for me is at the heart of everything. You must prove that the benefits that we get must outweigh the cost. And when the benefits are zero, it is evident that bauxite mining cannot be justified, it must change. But even JET, they will not approach this, so they need to be questioned. Why is it that, a bauxite mine, that, that the bauxite levy cannot be um, included in the discussion? But I said, if we had a proper constitution, this would be protected, bauxite would be protected, our energy would be protected. Energy is another thing where foreign is done solely for foreign investors to make money. We have some of the highest electricity rates in the world. Now, I'll give an example here. At the beginning of the year, um, um, Senator Matthew Samuda went to a water conference put on by the UN. And in this conference, he made a speech where he said that 
the distribution of water is poor in Jamaica because of high energy costs. Now, high energy costs are actually a policy of Jama the Jamaican government. In 2012, I've mentioned this before, 2012, Philip Powell, who was the Minister of Energy at the time, he came off the grid in 2012, 11 years ago, and he said at the time that his investment in solar and batteries will pay for itself in five years. So, in that five years, if he'd have started taking all our infrastructure off the grid, look at where we'd be now, none of our roads would be dark anymore because we'd have solar-powered lights, all our schools would be uh, solar powered with better kitchens to make sure that they can now provide food for the children. All our police stations would be better equipped because they'd be solar powered. 150 million US, that's the approximate debt, I mean, approximate um, bill that we pay every year to the private company, uh, electricity company. 150 million. That money we could have been saving every year and just think of what we could have been reinvesting that, that in. And it would solve our water problem as well as Carl Samuda, um, that Matthew Samuda mentioned. We would have solar and wind and battery powered pumping stations. And so we wouldn't have this problem because you know that every day in Jamaica there is a water short outage somewhere and it's down to one thing, JPS the electricity company, something happens with them and we lose water. So these problems would disappear straight away if we had this solar powered. And people can say, well, can we afford it? Of course we can afford it. As I said, it pays for itself in way under five years. Probably now in three years, it probably pays for itself. In about three years. So just think of all of what we could do. But instead, our government decided, let's not move from, to um, renewable energy. We're not going to do that. We're going to move to um, a natural gas. So we've moved from Venezuelan oil, and the Americans don't like Venezuela. They'll do anything to screw up Venezuela. So they're stopping us from importing oil from Venezuela and told us to import their LNG, I'm sorry, liquefied natural gas. And our prime minister, before his prime minister, made a lot of noise about it and told us that it will deliver cheaper electricity. That's what he said. In 2019, it was registered that we had the fourth highest electricity rate in the world. That's after we got LNG. And that was always going to happen. Because when we got in LNG, new infrastructure had to be built. And that infrastructure cost over a billion US. And how is that paid for? In our electricity bills. So it was already built in that we're going to have high electricity prices. Now, what should have been done, when they made the decision, there's an international standard where you produce what's called a, an IRP, an Integrated Resource Plan. That's what you do when you're going to make a decision about your energy. So it covers the short term, medium term, and long term. IRP was not done by the government. They went into discussions in 2014, 2015, transitioned us, transitioned us to LNG, to natural gas, which they called green, fossil fuel green and then said it was sustainable. How can it be sustainable when we're going to be still importing? So they've done that and there is no IRP to show us, no integrated resource plan explaining why have we not moved to renewables. As I said, just think about what we'd have now if, we had, if we'd have gone to renewables. We would have something called waste to energy and so right now we'd have proper, proper solid waste management. We wouldn't have all the plastic floating in the river because that would be recycled via solar and wind power. We would recycle our bottles, glass bottles. We could have glass bottle production, again, solar and uh, battery powered. So there are all these things that we could have done and should have done. And the government, because it wants everything to be put in foreign hands, hasn't done it. Now, the final thing I'll say about renewable energy is this is that I think most people have, might have heard about the 2030 vision, Vision 2030 by the UN. This now is set, so the government is supposed to have said that we're going to have at least 30% of our energy is going to come from renewables. It's forced to do that now because of the 2030, um, 2030 vision plan. So what the government is doing is trying to put all this, new, this um, renewable energy into the hands of private investors 
And an example of it is what Matthew Samuda spoke about at the UN conference. He told the world about um, a solar facility that had been built at the Mona Reservoir. Now I've looked at the plans and the foreign investor from Britain will be making around 20 million US every year. Whereas this solar pl plant costs them 62 and a half million, and that's inflated, I don't think it costs 62 and a half million. So we can see that this investment that they're going to make is going to pay for itself in way under four years. And that is what they've done. And Matthew Samuda called this a strategic nation building, strategic nation building uh, operation, something like that, that will benefit generations. Yes, it's going to benefit generations of the um, investors' children, yes. Not going to benefit Jamaicans. So here yet again, again, another resource, our energy, which should be protected if we had a real constitution. So I'm going to say to the people, when the JLP and the PMP are talking about a new constitution, nothing will change. It needs to be rejected. We, the people, have to write it. Because we know for a fact, bauxite mining won't change. Because I said, by 2027, they've got a projection for it to be zero. So they're not going to change that. And we know from energy, they're not going to change that either. Because if they were going to change it, we wouldn't have LNG in the country. We would have had um, um, a renewable energy. And we know that they're not protecting renewable energy because everything is being put into the hands of foreign investors. So again, as black people, we're always exploited. It doesn't matter what we have, we're going to be exploited. And it's time for us to get up, stand up, and do something about it.